Hey everybody, my name is Patrick Sugup with Sugup Real Estate Services here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, recently, obviously, we're going through a pretty crazy time in the world, um, both you know physical health and economic health. Me being in the real estate world, definitely want to um, look at see you know what are the potential impacts and uh, you know possible outcomes. So, uh, really wanted to put together. Um, something just to help myself understand what the current market is, what uh, you know the future may hold, what some um, strengths are of our market concerns, and then you know really kind of consider what that means moving forward. I, again, uh, I, I do, I'm doing this selfishly more or less just to help my, myself um, think about um, different outcomes and different scenarios and uh, not just take everything at surface level. So um, I'll take you guys through what I see um, as you know what our current market is. So um, and I'm going to take us through um, my expertise, which is single family, multifamily um, and uh, some commercial retail rental and office. And then also look at some of things that I'm not necessarily the, the greatest at. And maybe at that point, they'll be at the kind of the bottom of the list. So maybe at that point, I'll bring somebody in who is an expert and who might be able to help um, us understand some of the uh, potential consequences of what the current environment is and what we're going to see moving forward. And then again, an industrial warehouse. So uh, Fort Collins, we're a really small market. So uh, niching is important but not necessarily practical so uh, real estate and investing is my niche in Fort Collins so uh, these are just my thoughts so be curious and hopefully they might help you think about opportunities um, areas of concern and what to think about uh, so today we're just going to be looking at single families owner occupied um, next we'll look at what the rental market's doing um, so and the current current market here in Fort Collins is we have a really low supply of houses on the market both you know attached and detached homes um, and demand is is still you know pretty darn high um, we're seeing properties come onto the market go off um, and sell um, and that has been obviously the trend uh, over the last um, many many months and years um, interest rates are dropping, but really I probably should say that they're kind of flat right now. Actually, they, they jumped a little bit. I personally am doing a refinance locked at 3%, super pumped about that. But then I'm looking at another rental property of mine that um, the interest rates just don't make sense. But what's going on is there's just kind of so much activity that they, uh, the rates are artificially high, or at least that's what I'm being told. Um, we've really benefited in Fort Collins by market appreciation for the last many years. Um, even going through the 2008 and 2009 cycle, we've averaged just over 5% appreciation, including 2007, 8, 9 up to today. In 2008 and 9, we saw about a 2.5% dip and a half percent dip, respectively. And then from there, we went, you know, um, bananas in the 2014, 15, 16 timeframe. So, you know, hopping into um, kind of right now, uh, you know, actually, I, I probably should, I'll, I'll get back. I want to also look at, I don't know if you guys can see these, but um, the psychology, financial, education, professional, and ability of the market, just kind of looking at different reasons. And right now, the psychology, I, I would assume from a real estate agent, um, who's not a part of a big company but i would assume one that's in a you know that's what they are promoting is the sale of real estate they really want to make it everything's you know okay right now and the real estate market is acting normal and and it is but that's to be expected the real estate market lags about you know anywhere from uh three to six months uh you know from the stock market so um Right now, yeah, it's it's lots of people are still under contract and seemingly still pursuing that contract. There are some contracts falling, but properties are coming out of the market and people are still eating them up. There's been a lot of demand over the years of people who can't necessarily buy the houses who now are able to. So um, anyways, let's get into 
uh, some of my, my concerns of the market, which obviously first and foremost is going to be employment and uh, loss of income for many individuals. Um, if you've ever bought a house, you know that one of the first things that they're going to, um, you know, pre-qualify you on is they are going to ask for you your, your pay stubs and your your W-2 and potentially your tax returns before they pre-qualify or pre, uh, pre-approve you. Um, so obviously with the loss of income, loss of employment, uh, that's really that's really a scary deal for a lot of people. Um, my gut tells me that um, a fair amount of the people who have lost their their jobs are probably more on the renter side of things. Um, but that's not to be said that you know gym owners, bar owners, um, people who are invested in real estate, uh, commercial real estate specifically, um, you know, haven't lost income or their employment. So um, that that's a, a big concern of mine, obviously, and, and of everybody's is what do how long does this last, and what does the employment look like moving forward? And what does the income look like moving forward for those individuals? Can they afford their mortgage if they have to go um, from a job maybe they were making twenty-five dollars an hour to a job they're making seventeen dollars an hour? Um, you know, with the real estate market, obviously, um, obviously, re- definitely looking comparatively to the stock market is is performing much better. But one of the one of the areas of concern I have is the low level of liquidity. If you're looking at selling and selling quick, probably the quickest, if, if I made a decision to sell today, unless I'm gonna fire sell my house, probably the quickest from getting it, getting pictures taken, measurements made, and onto the market, negotiate contracts and close, I'd say probably the fastest from today I could sell is maybe 40 days. Uh, and that's if the finance market acts a little bit normal. I just did a refinance on my personal house that should have just been a slam dunk. It took me 40 days. So um, maybe that 40 days is pumped out to 45 or 50. So if you wanted to sell your house today, probably the quickest that you could sell it is 45 to 50 days, but more or less 50 to 60 days minimum. Uh, A lot of people are looking at refinancing right now with, you know, the um, assumption that interest rates are super low and they were for about four days and then all the refinances just stormed in and they um, also started uh, having you know government intervention and now they're artificially highest from what I've been told I think they're gonna they're, they're gonna dip back down but due to the fact of the amount of refinances that these companies are having the numbers are are not what what I what I was being quoted. Like I said, I, I refinanced at three percent. That same house today would have been four percent. So um, I do believe that will come down here soon, which will be opportunistic for the owners um, who might be at four point five percent or four percent. They could refinance, pull out cash, um, or just lower their monthly payments. I would say probably my biggest concern. Um, because I do feel like there's going to be some impact on the residential market is those people who have bought in their house in 2018 and 2019. Um, 2019 was a relatively flat year as far as appreciation goes. Um, we're just getting into 2020, of course. And so, you know, um, we've been right around that $400 to $425,000 range for the median prices of a home. And, you know, if we see a 10% reduction in price, all of a sudden that $420,000 house is now $380,000, $375,000. So that's a a concern of mine, which, you know, I don't, I I hope we don't get to this point, but, you know, that's all 2008 and 2009 was short sales and foreclosures. So Um, we got away in 2000 after 2008 and 9 from the zero down payment programs um, except for you know usda loans and va loans um, which they're you know (coughs) hopefully have a lot of um, help and ability to pay for their mortgage long term but 
recently we've been got, gotten into these chaffa um, Colorado Housing Finance um, Advisory or Association um, where they either give you a grant for your um, down payment money or basically they give you a second loan on the down payment money and uh, essentially I think only require you to bring a thousand dollars to the table so um, people with little to no money or little to no equity in their house have little to no incentive to stay there so if if shit hits the fan income starts falling and all they've got to their name is the house and but no income and no ability to create an income you know with zero equity or zero money into the into it why not just walk away i mean thousand dollars walking away from a a house that you have a thousand dollars into is pretty easy so i would say that's a, a concern of mine um what the hell is forbearance i know what forbearance is i think um you know basically you talk to your servicer your mortgage servicer who um, is different than the investor who is holding the loan and you you discuss with them hey i can't afford my my loan um can we push payments and um, if you're at, if you have a 30 year fix, which is actually one of the strengths of the real estate market, from my, my opinion, if you have a 30 year fixed mortgage, um, they're pretty much exclusively offering forbearance, no forgiveness, um, no, uh, you know, reductions, anything like that, just forbearance. And it could mean so many different things depending on who's servicing your loan. And I've seen it, um, suggested Uh, by lenders now granted this is a lender that's talking to me so they also have to protect themselves which if they're not able to make loans because the credit is dried up you know they're going to be a dramatic you know directly impacted so they could be directed to be marketing hey you know have your have your you know borrowers pay their loans but my understanding of forbearance is essentially you get to push the payment from now until some future date and I've heard as much as tacking the payment on at the end of the loan to after four months of non-payment, that lump sum of the four months missed payments is due. So if if your loan payment is $2,000 and you miss four months, $8,000 is gonna be due in that fifth month. If that's the case, or if it's to be due or paid over, you know, the next 12 months, um, you know, that's a little bit more reasonable, but if the case that I've been told of the loan being due in that fifth month or maybe sixth month or 12th month and, and you have a, lar- a big chunk of change due, I, don't, I just don't understand how that's even possible. So, you know, that would just be a concern of mine because of the uncertainty and um, how each servicer is going to be handling it differently. But if it can be tacked on to the end of the loan, it would be pretty awesome. So. Uh, you know, we talk about cost of living at the house. We've been all stuck at home. I just think, you know, our utility expenses are going to go up. I've been trying to be pretty self-conscious about turning the lights off, but you know, we're essentially home now for, you know, well, 24 hours a day. So lights are on, water's ran, you know, HVAC is, we're getting into summer. So, but, but soon the air conditioner will be turned on. Um, these are houses that I look to buy are the houses with deferred maintenance. And if we have a loss of income, log jam with the refinances, you're putting your loan on forbearance. So you've got to pay for your other living expenses. And one of those, you just can't afford your home maintenance. So depending on how long this lasts or, or what goes on, um, I would say that probably home home maintenance is going to be deferred, put off, or not even done. So uh, leaky sink just is going to leak. Um, hole in the wall, garage door off its tracks. Those are all going to be things that are just going to start going by the wayside. Um, or we're gonna we're gonna start learning to be pretty handy. Which with all the time on our hands, maybe maybe it's time to get back to being more handy and and self sufficient and reliant. So. Um, and then obviously, uh, there's a lot of different statistics out there talking about how few of Americans have savings or what those savings you know equate to. And um, 
owning a house, uh, they, they talk, you know, a lot of tax guys or financial planners will talk to have three to six months of reserves, preferably six. It's a lot of money to have in your savings account and not many people do. So if this lasts any longer and the government doesn't come to, pl- come to bat um, and your reserves get depleted pretty quickly, um, things can start moving really pretty fast. So those are pretty much all of my concerns. Um, you know, the strengths of the Fort Collins market is a lot of people have, you know, a ton of their net worth tied up into their house. So uh, lots of equity in their houses, which means you could either potentially do a HELOC or a refinance. Interest rates are really low. So even a prime homeowner primary right now, 4%, that's awesome. 4% for a primary, that's phenomenal. Um, now, granted, we've been at that like 3 to 4%, for, 3 to 5%, probably as high as 4.5% for 7, 8, 9, 10 years. So a lot of people don't necessar- won't necessarily be able to take advantage of these interest rates unless they get down to that you know, uh, really, really low threes and um at that point yeah refinancing makes sense so um you know one of the gifts to us all as um you know people who want to um build their net worth or uh, leave a legacy for their family is allowing uh, banks allowing us to put properties on a 30-year fixed mortgage i mean talk about being able to put as little as you know these chaffa loans, a thousand dollars down, and buying a house worth four hundred thousand dollars, and being able to pay that back over thirty years, um, you know, amortized. Of course, now, of course, the the banks make a lot of money. So when you go to get those closing statements, those HUD statements, and you see what ta- how much interest you're paying, it's it is sickening. But that being said, you've got to live somewhere, and whether you're renting or wanting to own. Um, that 30-year fixed mortgage is pretty pretty phenomenal. So that's a strength in any market. We are all finding about finding out right now about remote working and how possible it is because of being forced into doing it. I can tell you, um, we are adapting, and how many Zoom meetings we are having right now is uh, is pretty crazy. And so you know. Uh, remote working bodes well for Fort Collins, a small community, because you used to have to live in these big metros to uh, be able to drive to work and make the amount of income that you um, are desired to make in those big cities. Well, some of those big cities are, you know, high-paying jobs. The Google's tech companies um, they were already, you know, benefiting from the remote workplace. But it'll be curious to see how many companies, you know, adapt and leverage the ability to remote work now so um if you did have to sell your house and your equity you do have a lot of equity in your house and you've been there for at least a year um no capital gains so um or maybe it's two years i'm not sure it's two years i think it's zero capital gains one year it's preferable capital gains so let's go two years I believe two years is no capital gains for a homeowner, a homeowner, homeowner property, um, up to two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. Check with your tax accountant, but uh, a very sh- you know uh, strong asset of owning a house and selling it, not having to pay capital gains. So, let's say you bought it your house in two thousand thirteen for three hundred thousand dollars. You could sell that same house for four hundred fifty thousand dollars after paying fees, commissions, all that kind of stuff, you walk away with right around $420,000. So you net $120,000. Well, I can tell you what, $120,000 will go a long way as far as our reserves go and allow you to get back on your feet so long as appreciation and the value of properties in Fort Collins remains. So if they drop, well, then that $450,000 house might be you know, a four hundred ten thousand dollar house, but it's still after paying you know fees and commissions three hundred eighty thousand dollars. You can still walk away with about an eighty thousand dollar gain. So, if you bought anywhere before two thousand eighteen, you probably have about a ten percent cushion for Collins. So, if values do drop ten percent, you're at least breaking even. 
um, any year that you bought before that, you're probably doing all right. Fort Collins has been seeing a pretty steady population growth of about 2%. Uh, I don't necessarily see that changing. Um, if anything, I do think that Fort Collins will be viewed continuously as a shining star in the world and um, the country. So I do continue to see population growth being um, something that happens and not dramatically impacted by the coronavirus. So um, I do think that the, the that, that, that dramatic you know that that directly impacts supply and demand so um, I don't see a mass exodus again another strength of Fort Collins is our employment base our largest employers are going to be CSU Pooter School Districts UC Health and then we have some private um, uh, other private companies Woodward Governor and Otterbox who um, all seemingly have not necessarily been impacted as far as employment um, CSUs have, having their professors work from home, um, but other staff uh, might have had, you know, uh, been laid off, aka uh, people who are working at the dorms, the cafeterias, uh, janitors, uh, or at least re redu reductions. So they could be impacted by that. Pooter School Districts, it seems like they are keeping all of their salary um, people being paid, uh, maybe not necessarily the substitutes. So the substitutes were impacted by that. Uh, UC Health, well, I would say that's probably the last people that they're uh, letting letting stay home. They're they our front lines workers right now, and we hope them the the best and wish them well. So, I talked with a buddy at Otterbox. It seems like it's all full steam ahead. At least that was as of probably about a week or so, week or so ago. So I'll have to check back in with them. And Woodward Governor, I believe, is back you know back up rock and rolling. So. Our employment base is pretty strong, pretty diversified. We are not heavy oil, gas. Uh, we are not heavy any type of industry. We don't have a lot of tech. I wish we had more tech. Maybe in the future, um, you know, there's a uh, a really good university with a really good entrepreneurship program that hopefully benefits bringing you know cool tech startups here to Fort Collins eventually. So, um, and then right now, supply is super low. We have a, a month and a half of supply, so. It's going to take um, a substantial amount of houses to come onto the market, which you know could happen absolutely if this gets this gets ugly and uh, people get scared. It absolutely could be uh, a major um, influx of property onto the market, but our, our right now we're at a, a month and a half. It's about six months usually for a healthy market, so we could do with the extra supply right now. And we are going into spring selling season. That's kind of an unknown right now. Is is how much is the spring selling season going to do, and how much is the uh, coronavirus fear is going to set, you know going to do? So, um, sorry, I'm gonna let's see if I can get that right like that. I'm in my basement, so I'm sorry. You know, X factors is the CARES Act, what we what the government just passed, the stimulus package. It, I just was watching the news two seconds ago. I uh, shouldn't say that, but about 20 minutes ago. And it sounds like they're talking about another stimulus package for infrastructure. So uh, we just don't know how long this is going to go or what the government is willing to do. Um, and then obviously uh, COVID-19. What, what, we just don't know a lot about this as far as um, is summer going to impact it? Uh, you know, number of cases they're talking about 100 to 200,000 people potentially dying in the next one to two weeks, which is terrifying. Um, and it's spread, containment, uh, ability to get through this. I have no doubt that we're going to get through it. It's just what are the ripple effects from that, both uh, physical physical health and economic health. Um, you know, 100 to 200,000 deaths is, is quite a few. It, uh, it, unfortunately, it's probably going to be in those large epicenters, the New Yorks, Los Angeleses, Chicago's, um, New Orleans, um, Florida. So um, I, we will probably be a little bit insulated from that here in Fort Collins, but <clears throat> we've already had some deaths and um, it's too many. You know, I, I get that life happens and things, things happen. A lot of people are comparing this to the flu. A lot of people are comparing this to whatever. You know, a death is a death and I'm, I, you know, I feel sorry for you if you've lost a family member, friend. Uh, it's really, really unfortunate. So, um, and then obviously the vaccine uh, doesn't sound like that's going to be anytime soon, but maybe 
if the summer does have a, a positive impact on this and we circle back to it next next winter um, hopefully at that point we at least are close to a vaccine so we can treat it more like the flu and vaccinate and um, overcome this on an annual basis if need be without the um, major effects that it's having and then I think one of the um, kind of X factors that we need to to discuss and look at is especially with with real estate which this bodes really really well for real estate is inflation I mean two trillion dollars four trillion dollars six trillion dollars eight trillion dollars whatever the end number is I mean I mean, at this point, it's not a matter of how much money we can print. It's can the printers keep up and, and have enough ink and paper, it sounds like, to uh, keep up with the government spending. Uh, the government, uh, the, the U.S. dollar is strong, but for how long? And <clears throat> if we have inflation, obviously having hard assets um, is a major, major benefit. So, um, you know, overall, as far as the, uh, the real estate market in Fort Collins, um, I'm confident. Um, I would say I've, I've put my um, extremely aggressive purchasing on hold, but uh, just trying to look at what the current environment is. I'm also extremely busy, busy dealing with uh, investment properties and what, what rents look like, you know, mortgage forbearance and um, how we can work with our tenants while also making sure that we're able to pay the bills and not fall behind on our mortgages. So that's really kind of where my focus has been these last three weeks, but definitely um, extremely focused on the, 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 re you know, uh, the real estate side of things, the brokerage side of things, where, where and how it's going and what's, what's it gonna, you know, how's it gonna um, react. Um, and time will tell. So. Um, hopefully this just gives you something to think about, uh, to consider, uh, pause, and um, move forward intelligently, knowing w what you know and what I've given you as far as my thoughts to help potentially make uh, you know good decisions moving forward and the best decisions for you and your family. So um, have a have a great great. Uh, great day, great evening, afternoon. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, social distance, and take care of your loved ones, and make sure you tell them you love them. All right, again, this is Patrick Sugub with Sugub Real Estate Services. I hope this has been a help. Take care.